Golden State Media Concepts bring you Book Review Podcast, a haven for bookworms of all ages and the widest genres, from mystery to memoirs, romance to comedy, fantasy to sci-fi. If you love to read, this is a podcast for you. It's the Golden State Media Concepts Book Review Podcast. Welcome to the GSMC Book Review Podcast, brought to you by the GSMC Podcast Network. I am your host, Sarah, and I am happy to be here with you. Um, Question for you. Do you remember a million years ago, if you happen to listen to that episode? I know, a million years, that's hyperbole, but you know I love hyperbole. Uh, So do you remember a million years ago when I said that I was going to do my next episode on gardens and plants and that it was kind of a weird story well then life happened as life often does and I am just now getting around to doing that so it was the longest teaser ever not ever okay that's again hyperbole gosh just leave me alone okay uh and at any rate so this all came about because my coworker at my uh one of my jobs has a plant and um i am in the office every day in the mornings and she is often not in the office every day so she asks me often to water her plant while she's gone not a problem its name is planty uh, i did not name it although i probably would have named it i don't know i name everything norman uh, or some other old man name uh, so planty it needs to be watered and she was my coworker was saying one day that she worries that it's not getting enough TLC, you know, it doesn't get direct sunlight, or it maybe it would do better if it were in some fresh air every once in a while. And so I jokingly said, well, do you want me to start taking it outside and giving it spa days? And I actually did that one day. I took it outside and let it soak up some sunshine, and it's plenty is looking quite lovely. Then I started joking that I could take it outside, give it its spa day, and read to it, because, you know, you're supposed to talk to plants. It's supposed to help them, which got me thinking, okay, what would I read to the plant? Well, probably you could read anything to a plant, because, you know, they're just soaking up the attention along with the sunshine, right? But no, I need a theme. Uh, I always have to have a theme for everything. So what would I read to a plant besides books that are set in a garden or books about plants. I wouldn't necessarily read nonfiction books about plants. I might. Depends on if I was in the mood for a nonfiction book about plants. I'm not saying I have anything against nonfiction books about plants. I'm sure they're very interesting and that I would learn a lot, but I would read stories that are set in a garden, which then led me down the garden path of finding out some of those books. Now, the first one that popped into mind, of course, is The Secret Garden. And if you don't know The Secret Garden, I... If you've never read it or haven't seen a movie or even heard of it, I don't even know. Um, But it is by um, Frances Hodgson Burnett, and it has had numerous adaptations made of it as a movie. But the book itself uh, was written or was published, first published in book form in 1911 after it had um, been published as a serial in 1910, a serial version in a U.S. magazine. The book is set in England and um, the it was originally published by um, Stokes with illustrations by Maria Louise Kirk, signed as M.L. Kirk, and the British edition by it was published by Heinemann with illustrations by Charles Keith Robinson. And then, of course, as I've said, it's been um, many versions of movies. So what is The Secret Garden about? Well, it is um, the... It's it's considered a classic of English children's literature. Mary Lennox, a sickly and unloved 10-year-old girl, is ignored by her wealthy parents who never wanted her. She is cared for by servants who allow her to become spoiled and self-centered. But after she is sent to live on her uncle's isolated manor, everything changes when she discovers a secret garden. And that sort of tells you something, but not a lot. Yes, Mary Lennox is... She's understandably, um, she's understandably kind of 
well, she's been spoiled. She's been ignored. All those things that make for a, a, maybe a not so nice child. Uh, she's eventually sent to live with her uncle. And, um, you know, she's rude, like always. She, of course, doesn't like her new home. She doesn't like the people that are there. She's just grumpy about everything. And um, she she doesn't like where she lives. It, it's on a moor. Of course, it's on a moor. <laughs> What, what dreary book isn't set on a moor? But there is a good-natured maid named Martha Sorby who tells Mary about the late Mrs. Craven who would spend hours in a private walled garden growing roses. Mrs. Craven died after an accident in the garden and the devastated Mr. Craven locked the garden and buried the key. Mary becomes interested in finding the secret garden herself and her ill manners begin to soften as a result. Soon she comes to enjoy the company of Martha, the gardener Ben Weatherstaff, and a friendly Robin Redbreast. Her health and attitude improve and she grows stronger as she explores the moor and plays with a skipping rope that Mrs. Sowerby buys for her. Mary wonders about both the secret garden and the mysterious cries that echo through the house at night. So she explores, you know, so she discovers this garden and then she discovers the source of the secret of the mysterious cries and Basically, it's just, you know, a story of a young girl who's been neglected, who finds healing in nature, as often happens. She finds this secret garden and begins to enjoy spending time in it, begins actually making some friends and not being so rude and grumpy about everything. And then she discovers a, a boy who is the source of the mysterious cries, and he is sick and bedridden, but Mary is anything... Um, is nothing if not stubborn and she determines that he's not really sick and she takes it upon herself to like start getting him up and um making him do stuff and it just it's amazing um there it's an unspecified problem but he is again spending most of his time in in bed he is the son of mr and mrs craven and so um his name is colin and Mary just takes it upon herself to ignore everything the doctors and the servants have said about his condition. And um, I don't know how she decides that she has the medical knowledge to do this, but she gets him up and moving. And um, eventually, of course, his father, who's often traveling abroad, as so often happens in these books, comes home, he sees the um, improved health and the improved spirits. And um, he finally comes home when he receives a letter from Mrs. Sowerby and things turn out very well all because Mary was stubborn and persistent and she found the secret garden and it healed her and she was then able to heal Colin through a series of just being really stubborn and not listening to anyone. <laughs> so it is, um, it's, it's a lovely story if you can get through the first part where everybody's annoying <laughs> and everybody like you know mary is not exactly the most lovable character at first and of course you understand part of that because she is a product of her of her environment of the way she was raised being both as i said incredibly spoiled and incredibly neglected and unwanted by her parents that's going to shape a young mind so but she does find healing in nature and that's why I think it would be a lovely book to read to a plant uh, the plant of course could feel good about being a healing source for a young girl in the story and yes I did just anthropomorphize and yeah you know what I mean the plant but planty I think uh I think you know, would, would feel good about hearing a story wherein the child is healed by nature and another child is also healed as well. And, you know, of course it's more than just their physical ailments that are healed. They're healed mentally and spiritually and their relationships, uh, become better. Even the father eventually is, um, healed spiritually mentally emotionally all of those good things because of one little girl's obsession with finding a secret garden so we are going to take our first break of the podcast when we come back we'll be moving on to some other books that you might want to read to your plants stay tuned you're listening to the gsmc book review podcast and i'll be right back 
Want to know the latest and hottest music hidden in the airwaves? Don't be left out. Listen to the Golden State Media Concepts Music Podcast. Keith keeps you on the loop with everything you need to know from pop, rock, hip hop, and the top 40. And we'll throw in news of your favorite artists, concert and tour dates, and so much more. Listen no further because this is the gold standard in music podcast. Welcome back to the GSMC Book Review Podcast. We are talking in today's episode about books that you might want to read to your plants or, you know, just read if you like gardens or or whatever. And the first one we talked about, of course, was The Secret Garden. And then, as I am wont to do, I went and did an internet search to find lists of books about gardens. And there are so many books with garden in the name, of course. The first one on uh, the Goodreads list that I pulled up first was The Secret Garden, Not Shocking, uh, The Forgotten Garden, Midnight in the Garden of Good and Evil, Tom's Midnight Garden, um, let's see, Garden Spells, Elizabeth and Her German Garden, um, let's see, the samurai the samurai's garden the garden party and other stories uh let's see garden 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 the constant gardener um the virgin in the garden you know so you get the point (laughs) there are lots and lots of books about gardens we are going to um, move on to another children's book the secret garden is of course a children's book i don't know if i mentioned that but you probably already knew that being the brilliant listeners that you are the next one is a child's garden of verses Uh, this one is by um Robert Louis Stevenson, and it is, um, well, it's a book of poetry, of course. It's one of the most famous children's collections of poetry ever published. It was written by Robert Louis Stevenson for children about the joys and sorrows of childhood, touching on themes like um, illness and solitude, as well as make-believe games and plays, the, in play, excuse me, um, The collection includes stories like Foreign Children, The Lamplighter, The Land of Counterpane, Bed in Summer, My Shadow, The Swing. And so, you know, this is not exactly set in a garden. Um, It's it's a garden of verses. So you, you know, it's, it's a little more a little less tangible maybe, but if you want to read your plant poetry, then you might want to turn to this. Uh, The description says whether you're a collector or just want to share these incredible tales with the young readers in your life, um, this book will provide readers with countless hours of unforgettable stories and artwork. It is um, recommended for ages four through eight, grade level, um, preschool through third grade. And Yeah, you know, there's, again, a lot of different versions of this. It's been out for a while. (laughs) A while being well over 100 years. This one came out in 1885. So what is that? 26 years before, 25 years before The Secret Garden was published as a serial. And, of course, it has, um, as I said, many, many different versions and editions have been out. Many different versions. illustrated versions with uh, different uh, different illustrators so depending on the version that you find you, you know for reading to your plant your plant may not care about the um the the, the illustrations but your child might <laughs> and so you want to find one with illustrations that speak to you and then you can introduce your child to poetry. Uh, Robert Robert Louis Stevenson was, if you are unfamiliar, a Scottish author. And, um, oh, this is an interesting fact. Um, In 1922, the classical scholar Taro, uh, wow, Revealy um, Glover published a translation of the poems into Latin, which is interesting. I mean, who was, I suppose Latin was still being taught and uh, it's not taught as much anymore, but 
so if you are interested in Latin and you want to read to your plant in Latin, there is somewhere out there a Latin version of a child's garden of verses. I know you want that. Some of you might. And hey, more power to you. If you can read Latin and if you collect books in Latin, you are awesome. And I am, I don't know if I'm envious, but I'm impressed. I am envious of people who uh, can read in other languages comfortably or are learning other languages. Um, I am not great with languages, but I know a little bit of some. <laughs> Just enough to probably get me in trouble. I don't know. Let's go ahead and move on to our next book. So this one actually is nonfiction. I know I said that I wasn't going to talk about nonfiction, but I meant nonfiction in the sense of books that are, you know, specifically about plants themselves. Again, nothing wrong with that. I should probably learn more about gardening, etc. But this one is um, a biography. It's called The Paper Garden. An artist begins her life's work at 72. The title jumped out and grabbed me. This was from one of the lists that I was looking at. It is by um, an author named Molly Peacock. It is about a woman named Mary Delaney who was 72 years old when she noticed a petal drop from a geranium. In a flash of inspiration, she picked up her scissors and cut out a paper replica of the petal, inventing the art of collage. It was the summer of 1772 in England. Are you noticing a theme? We're much longer, older than 100 years in terms of these stories. Not this book, of course, but um, the, the, the setting for this one, for this biography. Uh, during the next 10 years, she completed nearly a thousand cut paper botanicals, which she called mosaics, so accurate that botanists still refer to them. Poet biographer Molly Peacock uses close-ups of these brilliant collages in The Paper Garden to track the extraordinary life of Delaney, friend of Swift, Handel, Hogarth, and even Queen Charlotte and King George III. She sounds like a fascinating woman just from that first paragraph, but now listen to this uh, second paragraph. How did this remarkable role model for late blooming manage it? After a disastrous teenage marriage to a drunken 61-year-old squire, she took control of her own life, pursuing creative projects, spurning suitors, and gaining friends. At 43, she married Jonathan Swift's friend, Dr. Patrick Delaney, and lived in Ireland in a true expression of midlife love. But after 25 years in a terrible lawsuit, her husband died. Sent into a netherland of mourning, Mrs. Delaney was rescued by her friend, the fabulously wealthy Duchess of Portland. The Duchess introduced Delaney to the botanical adventures of the day and a bonanza of exotic plants from Captain Cook's voyage, which became the inspiration for her art. Peacock herself first saw Mrs. Delaney's work more than 20 years before she wrote The Paper Garden, but uh, like a book you know is too old for you, she put the thought of the old woman away. She went on to marry and cherish the happiness of her own midlife in a parallel to Mrs. Delaney and by chance rediscovered the mosaics decades later. This encounter, res or this encounter confronted the poet with her own aging and gave her and her readers a blueprint for late life flexibility, creativity, and change. That is one of the most thorough descriptions of a book on Amazon that I have ever seen and I am fascinated. This is going on my list someday. Um, it's, it's going on my list of uh, books that I want to read. This woman sounds fascinating. And um, I mean, even without the collages and the mosaics, she had a pretty crazy life. And she sounds like a really interesting person, um, an interesting role model, um, a role model for really changing the course of your life any number of times, kind of just going with what happens and, and um, making the best of it. So, you know, will your plant enjoy this book? Hey, maybe, but uh, it sounds great to me. And again, yeah, I know I'm asking if your plant will enjoy the book. You know your plants better than I do. You know what maybe they want to read in life. I don't, I don't know these things. I don't know your life. I don't know your plants' lives. I don't have plants. I used to have plants. I used to have a ton of plants. And then I moved so many times um, after college and I just... I stopped collecting them. Like I moved uh, all of my plants from college, got left behind in Montana when I moved to Texas because I moved in January and I didn't want to try to 
transport house plants and then all of my texas plants got left behind when i moved to berkeley for grad school because i moved in january and i didn't want to transport house plants in the winter and i have had a few since then i got several for my 40th birthday several years ago and they all died one of them didn't die no it eventually died um yeah so poof I don't know if I don't have a green thumb. I don't know if I just don't pay enough attention or if I'm not reading to my plants. Probably that's it. I should get a plant and I should read to it and I should report back to you as to whether it dies or I forget to water it. Yeah, we're going to take our second break of the podcast. When we come back, we'll be finishing up this episode of What to Read to Your Plants. Stay tuned. You're listening to the GSMC Book Review Podcast and I'll be right back. Tired of searching the vast jungle of podcasts? Now listen close and hear this out. There's a podcast network that covers just about everything that you've been searching. The Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network is here. Nothing less than a podcast bliss with endless hours of podcast coverage. From news, sports, music, fashion, cooking, entertainment, fantasy, football, and so much more. So stop lurking around and go straight out to the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network. Guaranteed to fill that podcast itch. Whatever it may be, visit us at www.gsmcpodcast.com. Follow us on Facebook and Twitter and download us on iTunes, SoundCloud, and Google Play. Welcome back to the GSMC Book Review Podcast. Today's episode is What to Read to Your Plants, which maybe is kind of ridiculous, but it's okay. Sometimes I need a little ridiculous in my life, and maybe you do too. Uh, my husband has been gone this week. He is at his class reunion, and so I have been talking to my dogs a lot. I talk to my dogs all the time anyway. I shouldn't use that as an excuse, but maybe uh, I will say I've been talking to my dogs and it leads to various levels of ridiculousness. I don't know. I'm just making up excuses now. Let's just wrap this episode up, shall we? Okay, our next book is one that I have not read, but is by an author that I have featured on the podcast before. That is Catherine M. Valenti. Um, she is the author of, um, oh, the books all have the really long names. Give me just a second. Well, I uh, the the girl who circumnavigated fairyland in a ship of her own making, and I have talked about that series before. She has such an interesting way with words, and so I am definitely intrigued by this one. It's called um, it's a series called The Orphans' Tales, and the book is In the Night Garden. Uh, let's see. So it is um, it's it's billed as Arabian Nights for Our Time, a lush and fantastical epic guaranteed to spirit you away from the very first page. So secreted away in a garden, a lonely girl spins stories to warm a curious prince. Peculiar feats and unspeakable fates that loop through each other and back again to meet in the tapestry of her voice. Inked on her eyelids, each twisting tattooed tale is a piece in the puzzle of the girl's own hidden history and what tales she tells. Tales of shape-shifting witches and wild horsewomen, heron kings and the beast princesses, snake gods, dog, dog monks, and living stars. Each story more strange and fantastic than the ones that came before. From ill-tempered mermaid to fastidious beast, nothing is ever quite what it seems in these ever-shifting tales, even and especially their teller. This is adorned with illustrations by the legendary Michael Kaluta. Uh, Valenti's enchanting lyrical fantasy offers a breathtaking reinvention of the untold myths and dark fairy tales that shape our dreams. And just when you think you've come to the end, you realize the adventure has only begun. So, 
as I said, I, I have not read this one, but I have read um, her other series, the first of which is The Girl Who Circumnavigated Fairyland in a Ship of Her Own Making. Um, she has such an interesting uh, way with just fantastic stories and the way she writes about them. Um, I'm trying to see now how many books might be. Oh, it's just two. So two of two in the Orphans series. And the second one is called um, In the Cities of Coin and Spice. So first one, Garden. Second one, City. And um, it's going to go on my list as well. Uh, add it to that list of things that I'll hopefully someday maybe get to. Who knows? Maybe you can read it and let me know how it is, please. Um, so a few other books as we are wrapping up this episode. I wanted, I've, I've talked about some children's books, but I also wanted to maybe look for some like picture books and all of the, actually all of the books except no, probably even actually all of the books are illustrated in some way, but I wanted to look specifically at picture books. And the first one that popped up that made me smile was um, The Carrot Seed, which is by Ruth Krauss and Crockett Johnson is the illustrator. It is a classic story, um, kind of right in there with Harold and the Purple Crayon. Um, but this one is when a little boy plants a carrot seed, everyone tells him it won't grow. But when you are very young, there are some things that you just know. And the little boy knows that one day a carrot will come up. So he waters his seed and he pulls the weeds and he waits. Uh, this beautifully simple classic teaches the patience and technique of planting a seed and helping it grow. It was first published in 1945 and has never been out of print. It is the timeless combination of Ruth Krauss's simple text and Crockett Johnson's eloquent illustration, and it creates a triumphant and deeply satisfying story for readers of all ages. This was a story that I read as a child and has a special place in my heart. Um, and that little boy was convinced that his carrot was going to grow. Thank you very much. Do not tell him different. So that is a very encouraging story to read to your plants. You know, there, there are humans that are going to care for you no matter what people say. Um, again, uh, do I need therapy? Probably. It's okay though. And then just a few more books to mention in terms of children's picture books that you could read with your children or your plants or your animals or just to yourself it doesn't matter and one is called flower garden and it um, is about a family who's living in a city apartment who creates their own garden a little girl and her father go to the grocery store and buy flowering plants then they take the bus back to their city apartment um, there they plant a window box as a birthday present for the little girl's mother it is written by Eve Bunting and it is told in rhyme and illustrated with lovely realistic paintings by Catherine Hewitt. It has been uh, apparently a hit with three to six year olds. The cover looks beautiful and I love that they are creating a garden in the city. Um, there's a book called Planting the Rainbow. You know, we're encouraged to eat the rainbow. This one is Planting the Rainbow and you can, um, it's about planting a a Rainbow of Flowers. It is by Lois Elter Elhart, and it is about a mother and a child who do plant a rainbow, beginning with bulbs in the fall and seeds and seedlings in the spring and ending with a beautiful garden of flowers in a veritable rainbow of colors. So that is always fun. Um, there's just a lot, a lot of book. Oh, there's one called Growing Vegetable Soup. Maybe you don't want to read that one to your plants because they might get nervous. Um, <laughs> You don't want nervous plants. They won't grow appropriately. So don't read about uh, making vegetable soup. But if you want to talk about growing your own vegetables and where our food comes from, that might be good to read with your kids. But don't read it to your plants. No, don't freak out your plants. There's a ton of books out there that are set in gardens, that have something to do with gardens, that people are wandering around in gardens, etc., etc. And if it's, it's summer and maybe you have planted your own garden. Maybe you want to read books about gardening, books about books set in gardens, read with your children, read to your plants, whatever you might be interested in. There are a million, trillion, gazillion books out there that could go on this list, but that would make for an incredibly long podcast. So we are just going to wrap this up. Thank you so much for joining me. Please join me again on Tuesday when we'll be back to our Tuesday interview. This week, I am speaking with author 
author Joseph Reed about his Seth Walker novels. This is a series featuring a former um, air marshal whose name is Seth Walker. They are thrillers, and we'll be talking about the first two books in that series. They're called Takeoff and False Horizons. So join me for uh, that conversation on Tuesday. In the meantime, have a wonderful weekend, and uh, whether or not you're reading to your plants or yourself or your children or your dogs, make sure you take some time to get lost in a good book. Thanks. You've been listening to the Golden State Media Concepts Book Review Podcast, part of the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network. You can find this show and others like it at www.gsmcpodcast.com. Download our podcast on iTunes, Stitcher, SoundCloud, and Google Play. Just type in GSMC to find all the shows from the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network from movies to music from sports to entertainment and even weird news you can also follow us on twitter and on facebook thank you and we hope you have enjoyed today's program